Well, good morning. From the Gila Bend KOA here in, in Southern Arizona. This is where I slept last night. And now we're going to Quartzsite. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Before we go, let me show you around a little bit. It is going to be a beautiful sunrise. I'm telling you, if it was just a little bit warmer, I would jump into that pool right now. Anyways, it is time to go. First order of business, get propane. Yep, I did run out last night, in the middle of the night. Well, off to Quartzsite we go, just uh, put, uh, just filled up with propane, $18.60 or something like that. I don't know if that's good or bad. In Miami it's 20 bucks, I've seen it as low as 15 or even 12 or at some places, so who knows. I put the GPS coordinates um, to the, my saguaro cactus, the same place where I camped last year. And uh, so I'll camp somewhere around there, drop the trailer, go to the RTR, see how it is. And uh, if I like what I see, I'll hitch up again and uh, take the trailer to the RTR. Unusually hazy day here in the desert, don't you think? It turns out we might have an unusual winter altogether. I mean, there are flowers on the side of the road, but hey, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We've been going north here on Arizona 85, and now we are going to take I-10 West the rest of the way. That is the Palo Verde nuclear power plant, the largest one in the United States. Oh, I just discovered this screen here on the Rand McNally GPS unit. That mode on the on the Rand McNally GPS could be very useful. If instances like this where you really need a special GPS because I mean, it, is, it is I tend to quartzite there's no other way to get there. there's no no low hanging bridges no no uh, no switchbacks you know so you got to know your elevation and the data about your trip and the sunset and the sunrise also are there so that, that, that's pretty cool I think I'm gonna keep it in this mode all the time unless I really need a you know, special GPS. Uh-oh, I just discovered something troubling here in the rest area. Even though I rotated my rear trailer tires before I left Miami, one of them is down to the wire, so they must be replaced. Luckily, there is this tire shop nearby, and of course, for this long trip, I am traveling with four new tires, since my size is kind of rare and very few shops carry it. 
Apparently, I have a misalignment with my torsion axles and my rear right tire in particular wears out on the outside quite a bit. I haven't been able to find a shop that knows how to fix this. So for the time being, I will be rotating and replacing tires more often than normal. Very nice gentleman there at the tire place. He charged me fifteen dollars each tire. Well, I gave him, you know, I gave him twenty each, just because it was nice and uh, very old school. Using one of those, the old-fashioned, you know, a quarter uh, mile. Merge onto I-10 West. The old-fashioned gauge and all that. Very, very efficient. He did the, got the job done. I, I filled up with gas, expensive gas, but now I guess now we are ready for quartzite. There it is, the now familiar valley, the crossroads of the RV world at the intersection of Interstate 10 and US 95. The summer population, 3,500, but right now in mid-January, it swells to over 250,000. It is a rite of passage for every RVer to come here at least once, in the winter of course. This is my second time here in Quartzsite, Arizona, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thousands of RVs at the vast public land all around town. We made it to Quartzsite. Also, at the many RV parks in town. Okay, here we are. This is the Skaden Wash. This, of course, is BLM Land, Bureau of Land Management. So you can get a permit to camp for free for up to 14 days. Of course, we're here during the long government shutdown at the beginning of 2019, so it is basically free for all at this point. Of course, it says host of duty. RTR, register at RTR. That's where I'm eventually going. Well, yeah, with the government shut down, there is no one here to greet you. I want to look for my saguaro cactus, see if, uh, if it's available. There's another saguaro cactus, not the one I'm looking for. By the way, I always get disoriented here at the BLM, where there are no real roads. There, to the right, that looks like the spot where I camped last year. When a big of you took my saguaro cactus. Oh well. Here, this looks like a nice spot. Here's where I'm going to drop it for now. I'm going to the RTR real quick to check it out and then I'll be back for my live video tonight. Before I go to the RTR, how about I show you exactly where we are? That highway, of course, is I-10. And as I pan here to the left, we can see Quartzite in the distance. I can't help but notice it is a lot less crowded this year, of course, I'm early. It'll get much more busier next week when the big tent goes up. Let me get a little closer to town. I'm gonna start flying back here and that large gathering of RVs to the right near the mountains that almost looks like a small town. That's the RTR, the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous way, way out there. And that would be me, little me down there. Okay, enough procrastination. Let's go check in at the RTR, and if all looks good and safe, I'll come back, hitch back up, 
and make my way out there. Perfect weather today, beautiful weather, it's like 60 degrees. I'm gonna keep the window open just because. Oh, this is that horrible road that is so bad, cars prefer to drive on the shoulder. Well, when in Rome. This is called Dome Rock Road East, and it runs somewhat parallel to I-10. Here we're gonna turn right onto Mitchell Mine Road. This year, the RTR is not taking place in BLM land proper, but in a special area designated by the Bureau of Land Management, since the event has gotten so big. The RTR was founded by Bob Wells, a nomad himself, in 2010, with just 45 attendees. This year, they are expecting several thousand. There's a little bit of a traffic jam to check in, but I'm surprised at how efficient and organized everything is, much better than expected. There was a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt on social media about the RTR being at this location this year. And these washes you had to drive through to get in. I mean, if you have a really big rig, you might run into trouble, but it's all good. I sense a good vibe, so I'm not gonna waste any more time and I'm going to bring Mini Teeny over. This area here at the beginning seems a little crowded, but there is plenty of room towards the back. We are in a little bit of an elevated position here and we can see the town down there. Well, nothing has ever been written about cowards, so... I'm going to the RTR. Here I am, going, now with Minitini in tow. Yeah, this is not a smooth road. Check it out, bunch of schoolies going in. There's another event called Schoolie Palooza, which is about bus conversions, coming up very soon here in Quartzsite. Much more congested now that it is later in the day. I should have come with Minitini in tow earlier, but as I said, I had heard so many conflicting stories. If there is one negative to the RTR, is that the only way to get there is by driving almost two miles on this narrow road. And you know me, I'm not gonna stay out there for the whole week. I'm gonna wanna go into town, check out the swap meet, the bar, etc, etc. There's an area here to the right, just outside the event, that has been unofficially dubbed the Party R, almost as a form of protest by some of the previous attendees who would prefer a more festive atmosphere. And they got some complaints last year, so they decided to stay outside, where the rules don't apply. As you can see, there's a little bit of a traffic jam, bottleneck here at the entrance. And you have to wait, even if you already registered, because there's only one way in and out. I was recognized by this gentleman here at the entrance, which is super cool, by the way, to meet people on the road. And the washes are one way, so they have volunteers with walkie-talkies on both sides directing traffic. As I said earlier, very efficient and well-organized. I'm pleasantly surprised. Here comes the second wash. <laughs> kind of bumpy here, but it is what it is, right? 
They have given each area like street numbers. This area, for example, immediately after the second wash is called Second Street. Went through both washes with no problem, so that's the good news. Now let's look for a place uh, semi-secluded, not too secluded, but so much secluded. This is called Second Street. And that over there, that's the bad wash that I, that I would not, I don't think I want to go through that one. Now this is really cool to be here, actually. Kind of a dream come true if, in a way, you know, I've been hearing about this event for, for so many years. It was just a, a much smaller thing. Now it's, now all the YouTubers made it famous and it's like super huge hugely a uh, popular event here. I see a music camp sign. I wonder if it's still considered a party area. There's a nice trabato over there. Okay, as I said, let's find a suitable spot, not too secluded, but not too close to anybody else either. I want my privacy and respect others' privacy as well. So many different rigs here. But still, around this area it is still a little too crowded. Decisions, decisions. Around here, it is kind of nice, but no, let me go a little further. By the way, it is almost unnoticeable, but the further we go, the higher we go in elevation. So if by any odd chance it would start raining in the desert, it is better to be at the higher ground. Just saying. Yeah, I like this large open area right here. Nice saguaro cactus. Parking uphill might be harder to level with my new hitch, but the view is so much nicer. What the heck am I doing? Uh, looking for desert critters, perhaps? Well, here I am, campsite number one. I might move tomorrow. So excited to finally make it to the RTR. From this vantage point, we can see almost the whole event, except for a few people further uphill. And there's quartzite in the distance. Can you see all the quote-unquote streets down there? Somewhere down there is second, third, fourth, and so on. I'm on like six. Then this long one here by the entrance before the second wash, that is First Street. And on the other side of the main road where you see a bunch of people gathered, that's the main stage where they do all the seminars. There's Mitchell Mine Road. To the left of it, the aforementioned Party R. We'll visit the area later in the week. Okay, let's fly back, because I have to get ready for my weekly Friday live stream before a live audience today. Hello everybody and welcome to Quartzsite Arizona, coming to you with a live audience today. Uh, here from the Robert Trump Rendezvous. I'm at the RTR and there's like a gazillion people here. I'm, they're all probably watching YouTube, so 
Actually, for the amount of people here, the wireless internet works surprisingly well. By the way, the live audience are Max and Sandy McLear from Phoenix. And uh, actually, I managed to find the one secluded area here in the RTR. Because, you know, I wanted to, I wanted, mainly because I wanted to chat with you guys and I didn't want to have like, you know, 20 people around me. Uh, you know, because because I I get self conscious sometimes when I have like people staring at me. Not not this not these guys, but you know, like strangers. <laughs> Just look for stands, big red semi between RTR and PARTR. Later during the chat, Joseph Montoya also arrives. Hi there. Are you still on? Yeah, we're on. We're on the air. Hello, Robert. How are you doing? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet yeah. you too. Joseph Montoya. Oh. Talk to you. All right, yeah, of course. He tracked me down thanks to that yellow van in the background. But I'm gonna give you a 360 tour here of where we are. And this is a beautiful place here. This uh, our, our lovely companions here, they came to visit. Here's my saguaro cactus because, you know, I had to park right next to a saguaro cactus. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't be me. And you know, a lot of people get emotional when they come to Florida and see the palm trees. When when I passed uh, uh, Phoenix, Phoenix was in Tucson. When I passed Tucson, you know, when you pass uh, Picacho Peak State Park and you start seeing saguaro cacti everywhere, that's when I get emotional because I, I know I'm I'm in the. Nest. That's when I managed to kill the internet connection by moving around so much. For my truck. Anyways, after the live stream, I stayed chatting with the MacLears and Joseph pretty much until sunset. And oh, that desert sunset. Of course, the best colors actually happen after the sun has set. Ooh, check out the moon! Yeah, the later it gets, the better the colors. Everywhere you look. Wouldn't it be cool to fly on one of those? Well, the only thing we can fly on, sort of, right now, is the drone. Let's make a quick flight before it gets dark. Yeah, the drone on automatic doesn't really do it justice. You have to dial down the exposure and then it looks a lot closer to what you see with the naked eye. everybody or shall I say good morning it's another beautiful sunrise here in Quartzsite Arizona today we're gonna explore the RTR Yep, the sunrise is as surreal as the sunset was yesterday, perhaps even more so with this haze in the atmosphere. Whoa, there's like a mini Skullipalooza going on down there. I wonder if Chris of the Off Grid Schoolie channel, formerly Chris and G, is down there. 
Well, I moved. And this is perhaps the only drawback of my new uh, prop ride hitch. Is that it sits, it sits uh, very low to the ground, especially on my kind of, my trailer, my trailer is low to the ground and the hitch is low to the ground. So if you're slightly uphill, it, it is impossible to level, level the trailer. So I moved uh, to a slightly different location. I was over there and now I'm over here. And check it out. I have an even bigger saguaro cactus, so it works out. Uh, and now I'm gonna take a shower and explore the RTR. It's supposed to rain this afternoon. And I'm gonna turn the generator on a little bit because we're not gonna get much solar today. I don't know how, but I depleted my battery pretty good last night, so I'm having to run the generator here for a, for a few minutes before I go. Like in 10 minutes, I'm going over there. How interesting. Let's walk around a little bit. It is always a little unnerving leaving Minitini behind in the middle of the desert for the first time. But nothing happens out here. Still a little bit of a hazy day here in Quartzite. Let's walk towards the gathering area. Join the rest of the pilgrims on their morning pilgrimage. And I did get to meet some viewers on this day, by the way. Hmm, traffic jam crossing the wash. Well, there's a lot of cars parked here. If it's today, you're not going to get much. It's just not a lot of sun today. But uh, yeah, Jim, Jim loves to cook and loves to cook on solar and talk about solar. Here's the main gathering area. Bob Wells on the main stage with all the announcements of the day. Since I got here late, I really have no idea what's going on. It's something about a seminar being cancelled. Could it be the solar seminar? I don't know. Here's the free pile. You know, one person's trash can be another person's treasure. It is a nice way to exchange stuff in any case. That's where you get your button. Here are the bulletin boards. More stuff here and there's Bob still That's giving like all the pertinent morning information. And actually what to do in case of emergency, very important. And so forth and so on. Okay. Looks all taken to me, but there's handicap. Is this handicapped dark you where I just told them? Okay, everything I just told you is wrong that you know where you are, you know the street number, and that you turn on your emergency blinkers because, you know, they're going to drive around and look at five or six thousand rigs and which one's yours, the, which white van is yours, and uh, it's kind of hard to know. So if you have your emergency blinkers on, that's one of the things they've asked. Let me also say that uh, we've been working with emergency services and uh, because this was a, a big issue with the BLM that if something happens, we have to get in. And that's why everything is so organized. It's all organized around emergency services getting in. That's why we have all the no parking signs and the handicap areas and the street signs so that in an emergency, the emergency services could get in. Very big deal to them, and, and rightfully so. All this stuff, and there are three continue walking around. So far, beautiful day here. It's a little bit chilly, but it's gonna get warmer, so that's why I'm just wearing a t-shirt. I mean, it's not chilly, it's but probably high 50s. This behind me here, that's that first wash that everybody was talking about at the beginning, which is not bad at all, actually. I guess there are several groups of people who are boondocking here in the BLM land just outside the RTR. And this is actually the area where the RTR took place last year. And for those with very large rigs or something with a big overhang, staying in this area might be the more prudent approach. Here we go, busking bohemians, uh, music, fire, fun, party R. Let's explore the area a little. That's a cool little trailer. It turns out everybody is still asleep from the late night party, so I'm gonna get back here at some point. I still like to see all the other rigs and everybody's slightly different approach. Minitini's green cousin.
Hmm, it looks like there might be a back entrance to the RTR. Good to know, in case those washes get flooded, because it looks like bad weather is coming our way. Coming from California of all places. I just met my new neighbors, very nice folks from Eastern Texas. Yellow cussing now. There's the afternoon seminar, and um, I have no idea what it is about. But don't let that be. Yeah, perhaps I turned them too soon. Ooh. Bon appetit, everybody. The only thing missing is Ili. And check out. Well, not the best desert sunset, but still nice. Once again from the RTR well good morning everybody greetings from Quartzsite another day here and um, yeah today we are back to typical desert weather here yeah not a cloud in the sky uh, it's supposed to be partly cloudy this afternoon though uh, well hopefully I will get a decent amount of solar today and um, because I depleted my battery pretty good last night and uh, yeah, the next step is to figure out a way to add more batteries to this trailer. Well, I decided to walk a little uphill this morning. Check this out. Check out this Shoya cactus. Don't be fooled by their delicate beauty. You don't want to fall on one of these. Keep going uphill. Here's uh, the road, what they call the mine road, I think. And it goes to some my mines, gold mines by the mountains. And I think this is what they were calling the unofficial entrance to the RTR. I could be wrong. Anyways, Mini Tini, it's somewhere down there. And uh, what a difference a day makes. Today we are definitely experiencing typical desert weather. Blue skies, baby! This is the quartzite I remember. I'm heading down to the main gathering area to attend today's seminar. Uh-oh, looks like the dumpster is getting full. And here we are once again. Homes on Wheels Alliance is really a 401c, or 401k, whatever it is. I'm confused. 
Today's seminar should be pretty cool. It is going to be none other than Caroline. Not Caravan Caroline, but Caroline's RV Life, one of the more popular full-time RV YouTube channels. But first, let's see the burning van. On the last day of the event, this wooden van will go up in flames. But before that happens, I left my indelible mark on it. Well, perhaps not so indelible. Carolyn is a really good friend of mine, someone I care deeply about and I just have the deepest admiration for. And so she's here. And you can pay me later. I can't afford that. And I was going to come up and call him my ex-friend after the Caravan Carolyn thing. <laughs> Hi, friendlies! At the beginning, she didn't look too thrilled about him mistakenly calling her Caravan Caroline, but perhaps it was an inside joke. Anyways, a good seminar if you are new to boondocking and camping for free around the country. I'll leave you with a few moments here. This time, and I was thinking about what to name it. I was like, Boondocking 101! Boondocking for dummies, and I was like, no. Boondocking for smarties. That's what this talk is called. Why? Because we're the smart ones, in my humble opinion. How lucky and how smart are we that we are the ones who have figured out that we don't have to participate in that rat race that we have all known for a long time is a lie. So what if I told you, well, you already know, that we never have to pay rent or mortgage ever again. We have found the secret to living as free as we can in today's society. We have found a group of fellow adventurers and fellow uh, counterculture, let's say. I think we're a counterculture of the modern day, of people who have figured out a way to live our authentic selves. And for me, and I think for many of, that, of, many of us, that meant getting away from debt, getting away from stuff, and living closer to nature. I've boondocked all across the country, from Florida to Alaska, Canada. I've traveled 48,000 miles. Um, I have, I have, I've, I've put a lot in three years. And so today, I'm going to share with you everything that I have learned about camping, living on public lands for free, and finding the most amazing places that you can imagine: beauty, solitude, silence. Uh, just being closer to nature, um, even in a larger RV. The, the official term for what we do, official, is called dispersed camping. So you're never going to go on a national forest site and look for boondocking. Where to boondock? You're going to look for dispersed camping. That's the technical term. And what that means is that while in many uh, public lands there are designated areas that you can camp, there are designated first come first serve campgrounds and oftentimes they're free. There are what's in BLM land called LTVAs, which are long term visitor areas, which you pay, they're really inexpensive, but those are designated campsites. Dispersed camping on the other hand is what you do when you just go down a road and find a place to plop down and call home for the day or the week. So officially it's called dispersed camping. Those two, take your garbage out. Take more than you are going Don't you love it when someone stands next to you and starts talking on the phone when you're trying to listen to a seminar? Nature is natural as we can. It's just something I'm very passionate about. I mean, yeah, you know what? The argument can be made. I'm driving a giant class C, you know, in the middle of the desert and getting stuck and ruining the sand. I agree. You know, nobody's perfect. We do the best we can and we just try to be mindful. You know, we are all leaving an impact on our environment in one way or another. And I think that as long as we're all mindful of that and try to do our best, I think that we can go a long way toward preserving it. A wash is a water source because when it rains, water flows through a wash. As we'll soon find out. Wherever it goes and it becomes drinking water. And yes, that means washes. Out here it might be tempting because it's all hard rock and it's not easy to dig. So you're like, oh, I'll dig a cat hole in a wash. No, please don't. That's our drink time on uh, when most of the time when you're camping on public lands you don't need a permit. Anyways, I am not going to replay the whole seminar, but you get the idea. A lot of it is beginner stuff and a lot of it is selling the lifestyle to newbies. But she does make some insightful points. And some good information as well. Trucker spots for a reason because they're 53 feet and, you know, they need that spot. Right, Caroline's uh, seminar. Very, very informative. I'm going to try to come back in half an hour for the meet and greet. 
and then we're gonna go to port side and i'm gonna take you with me there is a pretty long line Line. Well, the line for the meet and greet turned out to be a little too long, so I decided to relax a little before heading to town. I have to give it to Bob. They are very organized. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been to previous uh, RTRs, but this one is very organized. There's the Port TR. I've been actually watching live streams by other YouTubers like Hobotech, and it is like a disco in there till the wee hours of the night. I think I prefer my quiet, secluded spot. Well, yeah, it's a little bit of a bottleneck to get out of here to be honest about it. There's the RV pit stop. You won't see it this empty for long. Here we are, the swap meet, the jams show, the RV show. Ooh, the big tent is already up. Would this be considered downtown quartzite? Uh, this time of the year, it certainly is. Let's find parking. Here we are. Maybe I get a burger afterwards. All kinds of stuff here. Hey! Well, yeah, someone recognized me. I don't think I wanna buy anything, but it's always good to know. But, but they have, uh, you know, here. Oh, I remember this, the homemade ice cream. They have an ice cream machine. That is pretty cool. Maybe I'll have an ice cream here too. Beer, wine, food. Now they are speaking my language. And I think this is it. Beer bellies. Actually, this is the place I was looking for, the adult daycare. It's walking here. Well, what do you know? I'm drinking with a monkey. And they have some really good Elysian Space Dust IPA. And uh, I think I'm gonna get me one of these hats. Let me tell you, your beer is always better with live music. I went to order a burger and lost my other spots, so now I have a new monkey. I always wanted to come to this place, you know? And that's a pretty good burger, let me tell you. Well, that was a pretty decent burger and a great IPA. Now let's uh, continue. Oh, and they have live music. The RV show a little bit here. Oh, here we have something interesting. This is a, a Heimer. And this is a, a Pro Master chassis. I wonder if it's open. Oh, yes, it is. Well, this is, of course, an ac active, but this is the active that has a, a tent on the top. So you can sleep two other people on the top floor while you sleep on the bottom floor yeah this is a regular active like the one the russos have there's your cassette toilet i want to like the active but i don't know there's something about it you guys want to check out a thor vegas here's a thor vegas 
which is a very short class A. If we, we were ever gonna get a class A, this is 24.1, which means it's probably 25. It does have one slide here on the couch, but... And this one has the twin beds in the back. I would take the one with the corner bed, perhaps. And it does have an extra bed up here. So, yeah. It's, I mean, it's not a bad floor plan. They just have the, this kind of reputation for being not great. By the way, here they have the three, the three uh, Heimer uh, Actives, which used to be called Grand Canyon originally. And as you can see here, this is the 2.0, the one with the sofa bed in the back when they, when they had um, the folks at Road Trek redesigned the thing. I don't know, it has less um, less storage than the original um, Heimer and look at that. If I gain a little bit of weight, this would not be a viable solution. Let me see what else they have that is in the, you know, the type of things that we like. Yeah, a bunch of classes, a bunch of fifth wheels. Let me show you. Here we have this smaller, these smaller toy haulers, which could be actually a good idea if you want to have some toys in the back or an office. But you don't, you don't want to tow something huge. Well, they do have to change that name and call it Denali now, because you know they changed the name of the mountain, right? It's pretty cool, actually. Where's the bathroom? Oh, in here, it's a probably a wet bath, right? Yeah. That's probably the deal breaker right there. Sunday smell of someone frying chicken. By the way, this whole place is going to be a lot more crowded next week when they open up the big tent. Exactly. Oh wow, he's got a guest singer now. Oh, today and every day, I'm just me. This area where they have the swap meet is called Tyson Wells. Well, since we're here, let's check out the Jams show real quick. Can you tell I'm not really into this stuff? So that's what the holes are for. Okay, these are pretty. Let's go across the street here, see what's on the other side. Would this be considered jaywalking? Probably would. Let me tell you, I know next to nothing about gemstones or any, anything like this. I, I wouldn't be able to, to tell you, but they are sure beautiful. Amethysts. This is petrified wood bowls. Wow. Very cool. Nine hundred dollars for these folks. This is beautiful, though. Well, as I said, I have no idea about these things. But if you have nine hundred dollars to spare, well, sure, go for it. Get one of those amethysts. Here, it's it's a lot of stuff, but I think I think I'm gonna head back to the RTR, take a break, edit some video, and then we'll see. By the way, this place is huge. There's a lot of stuff to see here, but we're gonna come back next week when the big tent is open. So then I'll I'll, I'll show you the rest.
Well, this is one of those odd moments where this area is empty and I wanted to show it to you while well, it's empty. That's the main stage here. And back there, they're like cleaning the, the porta potties and it does not smell good. <laughs> anyway, let's see if there's anything new around here. Well, one more time here we are. This is the burning van 2019. You know who's there? Me. Which is all gonna burn, so I, don't, I have no idea why I put my name there, but you know, to have like a, a memento of this uh, location. You know, here they have the announcements, the, the bulletin board, the free stuff. And here's the, the Home on Wheels Foundation that, you know, Bob Wells sponsors. And here, let me show you something. You're very, very interesting. Yes, here we have the pig. <laughs> That's cool. Who do we have here? Howdy! Hi, ah, Mike and Stephanie! Well, yes, I had been hoping to bump into Mike and Stephanie, Van Life Sheldon's Travels, to interview them, also to add their sticker to my growing collection. The interview actually went really well. They are such a nice couple. After the interview, we're going to see their rig. And of course, I'll put a link to the full interview. I'm gonna give Mike and Stephanie here a ride to the rig, since it is kind of getting dark. They are staying at the party R. Hmm, there's no one directing traffic at this time of the day. sunset. Well, everybody, we're gonna get a quick peek here at Mike and Stephanie's RV. Oh, look at that. It's a beautiful sunset here in the desert. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me show you. Let me show you real quick that it's the sunset. I don't know if this camera is gonna be able to capture it, but that's amazing. Here we go, Van Life Sheldon's Travels. And we gotta, we gotta take a quick picture of Sheldon, yes. right? Absolutely. Oh, this is cozy, but very, very functional, guys. Yeah, I like it. And here's the star of the there's show. There's the star of the show right there. It's awesome. You, I mean, you've got a real oven. An I oven. don't have a real oven in An my oven RV. And this stove, is great. Running hot water, outdoor and shower, the... toilet, camp, you know, surveillance, freezer under the bed. Yeah. Well, this is great, man. I appreciate you letting me take a peek inside your, your home here. Thanks for coming. I really, really appreciate it. All right. Day three of my RTR experience. Is it really day three? I'm starting to lose track of time. Well, hello everybody, greetings! Today coming to you from the Party R. Might as well show you the area as well, since they kind of claim to be unofficially part of the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. There's the fire pit, one of them anyways, where they party until early morning. And it is a pretty vast area, as you can see. No wonder the actual RTR took place right here last year in 2018. There, by the two white tents, there's another party fire pit. A 
Okay, now from the party R, we're gonna fly to the RTR. I mean, they are almost right next door to each other. Check out that first wash going in. And the gathering area or main square, I forgot the official name, town square, I guess, where the main stage is. There is a seminar going on right now. I see I have a new neighbor, and I think I know who that is. Look who, who I ran into. Asha, pandemonium, yeah. and there's Mumu. Asha and Mumu, and of course, the famous panda, which is, uh, you have a unique rig, by the way. Yeah, she is unique, definitely. Mm -hmm. On this day, I got to meet the man himself, Bob Wells, CheapRVLeaving.com, founder and organizer of this event. And I got the selfie and autographed book to prove it. Well, let's go into town. And we are back in Quartzite. To be honest, there is not a whole bunch of other stuff to do here, so might as well. Could it be possible? Am I saying I'm getting bored of the RTR? Well, I got me an ice cream. That's really good butter picking. Oh yeah, check out the Colorado. Anyway, this is Roadrunner Market, which is probably the largest marker here in, in town. Which is not saying much, but let's check it out. Yes, they have pretty much all the essentials. Perhaps a little overpriced, but it is what it is. Hmm, Pico de Gallo. Kinds of stuff here. Good. Rain selection, not great. As night and rain begins to fall, I'm going to have dinner here with viewers Sharon and Larry Preston. Food's good, company even better. Well, I'm here with Sharon and Larry Preston, and we're going to eat some barbecue. Where's it? Thank you so much for the invitation. We, we just left it. Oh, by the way, it is supposed to rain all night and all day tomorrow in the desert. I want my money back. Well, good morning from the flooded desert. The old washes are becoming rivers again. It's like a little creek going downhill. Yeah, it's a real bummer. It reminds me of what Caroline said the other day about washes. I guess that's why they are called washes. The real bummer is today I wanted to swing by the Escapers annual bash in Lake Havasu. A bunch of friends are out there. The RV geeks are going to speak and I'm stuck here. I'm not sure I want to move the trailer under these weather conditions. It is probably really muddy out there. I'm gonna walk around a little bit here under the rain, see how, how everybody's holding up here at the, at the RTR. 
ground is really wet. I mean, it's been, it's been raining for hours. It rained all night and it's supposed to rain all day. But still, you know, the washes are, have turned into rivers. I'm gonna go down a little bit, see how it looks. I'm only bringing my phone on this one because it's the only water resistant, uh, decent camera that I have. This is the main road. Yeah, that's how the road looks. All around us. Well, I guess the, the lower you got, you come here, the, the lower elevation, the more water underground there is. We're coming up on that, on the second wash. It's pretty muddy in this area. And look at that, look at that wash down there. It's like a creek. I guess that's why they call them washes, right? We're gonna see now how it looks. Okay. Yeah. If I fall, <laughs> don't make a good fun, funny video. Yeah, it's kind of slippery, though. Yeah. No, not too bad, actually. Rock. All right. Well, made it. Well, as you saw, that first uh, the first wash, which is really the second wash, it wasn't so bad. And some folks are making a like a like a bridge over troubled water here. And there, this is not too bad either. So it is passable. Let's see how this van does here coming up. Well, that, that's what it looks like today here at the RTR, uh, January 15th. And I have no idea when I'm going to publish this uh, video, but it's been raining all night and it's going to rain all day. And everything is soaking wet, you know, the, the washes have turned into creeks and uh, dirt has turned into mud and um, it is not the greatest uh, situation but you know what tonight it'll stop raining tomorrow it'll dry up and we'll get out of here actually <laughs> I'm gonna do I have some frozen meatballs there in my in my fridge that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a nice sofrito with peppers and um, onions and garlic and some of that pico de gallo I bought yesterday at, uh, at the Roadrunner grocery store there so I just have to fork this little creek here Oh, no, there's another one, but this one should be even easier. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce my neighbor. There's Daniel. Danny Machado, viewer, patron, member Pelican Head, and super, super cool guy. Oh, what to do on a day like this? We're gonna cook, because sooner there's nothing else we can do. And then I'm gonna edit some video and that's it firing up the jenny because we're not getting it and oh no way he's getting any soda here in this uh, town I'm gonna make some meatballs and white rice chopping some onions and garlic we're gonna start sauteing those and then I'm going to add the, the peppers oh, yeah. now for my signature secret ingredient we're gonna add some <laughs> Edmundo Vino Seco, and there's a public brand, and there's a different brands. I don't know if you can find it in the Hispanic section of, oh, of your local supermarket. This thing is dangerous. Like a paper cut, but in this case, a plastic cut. 
Uh, yeah, it's a dry cooking wine. Before we put the vino seco, we need for this to cook a little more. And of course, this Atwood ranges they, they don't heat up as, as much as the uh, as your regular range at home. So um, everything takes a little longer. You know what? I might throw a little bit of rice there. That basmati rice should take uh, about 10 minutes to cook. So when, when I think there are like 10 minutes left, I might throw a little bit of basmati rice in there. Just for kicks. And I am also going to put some, um, some of this tomato sauce. A marinara sauce from Publix. Should be good. And in, in Cuban, of course, you would call this petit pois. But it's just... Uh, green beans, you know. In Spain, they call them guisantes. And, uh, yeah, it's snowing inside many things. I need to, I need to whack it real good. So they, yeah, uh, why can't I whack it? Put some of this, you know, there. Oh, it broke. Gosh darn it. Okay, I broke it when I whacked it. Luckily, I have some large Ziplocs up here. And that's what I'm gonna use. Oh man, what a mess. What a mess I've made. <laughs> there. That'll do. <laughs> Just crazy. I have a, a stowaway fly here in the RV. I haven't been able to get rid of it. It's a smart fly because it doesn't want to fly out. I've opened the door many times and she's like, no. I'm standing here. Vino seco. Let's do it. And I tend to be very generous with my Vino Seco um, usage because it really does give the food a, 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 it's kind of a little acidic but very very nice flavor. I'll put some uh, marinara sauce, not a whole lot but enough you know to, to make it ah, you know nice for the meatballs so maybe half half a jar maybe yeah that should be enough I'll put a little more later. Paprika! Because I put paprika on everything. And by the way, thank you to Mr. Montoya. He was here the other day and and, uh, and he brought me some paprika. So I'm gonna, as soon as this one runs out, I'm gonna start using his. Some oregano and some cumin because it's, everything has to have a little bit of cumin, you know? Gives it that special, beautiful flavor. And now we're gonna move this around, you know, mix it all up. And then we're gonna add our meatballs, home style beef meatballs. And this is gonna last us a couple of days. I wonder what would happen if I put the rice in there. Will it cook together with the meatballs? You know, there's one way to find out. This is something I've never done before. And because I've never done it before, I'm gonna add a little more Vino seco. Just to liquefy a little more there. Yeah, that's good. I don't want to overdo it. And up here somewhere I have... Oh, I'm not even going to measure this, but I'm just going to add a little bit of rice. This is basmati rice. This is usually you boil it for 10 minutes and it's done. Enough. Well, that happens. Well, uh, yesterday I went to, to town and bought some. Luckily, I'm, I'm glad I went yesterday because today that wouldn't have happened. I bought me some Elysian Space Dust IPA, and that's what we're drinking until our lunch brunch is ready. Actually, just for good luck. Bring. There you go. Add that extra flavor. Salute. Oh, I forgot, I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of sriracha, just for, to give it a kick, little kick, you know. That way it goes uh, better with my beer. Uh, here's a look at the somewhat final product. The rice is still a little bit like undercooked, but it's, uh, it's edible by now, so beer. That's what we're gonna eat. 
that's it for now. I'll get, I'll, I'll get a little more later. <clears throat> We're gonna check our social media here. I don't know, I don't know what, I should, what I should call this dish. It has a little bit of paella in it, but not really. I don't know. It's pretty good. Well, this creek has already dried up. And as you can see, the weather is looking much, much better now. My generator was sinking here, but it's no longer sinking. Hmm. That's where he was. Yeah, I guess the vibration. And this creek here still has a little bit of water, but very, very little. I think uh, the worst is over. And we're gonna be able to get out of here tomorrow. On a positive note, the truck is slightly more cleaner than it was, slightly cleaner than it was yesterday. As you can see, the, the water bed is right there. That was uh, me trying to back up uh, earlier today. Got some low clouds there by the mountains. Let's inspect the roads from the air. Well, even from this altitude, you can tell the main roads are wet. But let's get a little closer. I'm really going to miss some of these sunsets when I leave. Although, since we haven't had typical Arizona weather, we haven't had many typical Arizona sunrises and sunsets. Well, there, that's more like it. Go figure, the weather improves the day I decide to leave. Although, to be fair, we had one other good weather day, at least it was sunny. Remember? The calm before the storm? Well, I'm all hitched up and ready to go. Saying goodbye to my friend and neighbor Daniel. May our paths cross again. Where is it? It's gone. Oh, there it is. This guy was just hiding under my, under my tongue jack. Even the desert comes back to life after rainfall. All right, it's time to go. Well, we're leaving the RTR, but we'll be back. One of the most rewarding parts of my visit to Quartzsite and uh, traveling around the country in general, really, it was meeting so many of you. All of you who watch and comment. So thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by and saying hello. If you'd been closer to the other travel train, yeah. I would have shoved you in behind him. I'm in no rush, man. No problem. <laughs> Life's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's not raining. Oh, that, 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 that alone. Yesterday, yesterday I showed up here. Well, I am leaving, going to Phoenix, because Ely is flying into Phoenix Sky Harbor in a couple of days. 
I can't wait to see her. It's been way too long. So on the next video, we are going to explore the Phoenix area a little bit together. And then we're coming back to the RTR in a few days for Burning Van. I wouldn't want to miss that. And then we'll continue. There is so much more to see. The adventure is just getting started, so look out for a new video every Sunday here on my channel. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss any of those. And before you go, you must have noticed the new song on this video. Remember, the music I composed for my videos is available on iTunes, CD Baby, Spotify and pretty much everywhere else. And if you actually want a physical CD or stickers or t-shirts, travelingrobert.com slash stickers is the place to go. Till next week! Thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.